Differentiation is definitely a very intriguing and useful process that we are going to be learning at this stage of our math because through the process of differentiation, we are actually able to obtain an expression that is going to represent the gradient of the original function, which means that if we have already learned differentiation, then we will no longer need to, you know, in order for us to try to find gradient, we will no longer need to go and try to plot graph, then after we use a ruler to try to, 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 uh, draw a line that is going to be tangent to the graph, then find a gradient of this line. Then after that, from this gradient, we will be able to deduce the gradient of the original graph at a particular point. Okay, the process is too tedious. So through differentiation, we will be able to do this very, very quickly. For example, if we are given that y is equal to a particular function, and this function is x to the power of 3. Let us first talk about the notation that we can make use of to represent differentiation. So there are some notations here. So if we have y is equal to fx through the process of differentiation, then we will indicate that by writing a dy dx. dy dx, please take note, it is a notation by itself. So this is not um, a representation of like d times y divided by d times x or this is also not a fraction, okay? This is just one single notation by itself. So this here represents differentiation of y with respect to x. And if you are doing it for the function, notation-wise, it is going to be f prime x, okay? It is pronounced as f prime x. It represents the same thing. It is differentiating y with respect to x. And if you want to indicate differentiation of an expression, for example, in this case, x to the power of 3, we can write it in this way d dx of x to the power of 3. All this represents the same thing. It is a differentiation of x to the power of 3 with respect to x. And how do we perform the differentiation? To perform differentiation, we are going to be making use of rules that are here that I've indicated in the outline. And we're going to be using results that I have here on the second page of the outline. For example, we have a x to the power of 3. And x to the power of 3 is like this over here. So we have y is equal to x to the power of n. And as long as n is a rational constant, which means that we are not going to be dealing with something that is like x to the power of pi, okay? Because pi is not a rational number. So we are dealing with x to the power of n in this case because this 3 here is a rational constant. So applying the result that we are seeing here, then this is going to be equal to, according to what we see, n x to the power of n minus 1. So it's going to be 3 because n is 3 then x to the power of 3 minus 1. So this is going to be 3x to the power of 2, which means that now this expression here represents the gradient of the original function that is given to us, which makes it very, very simple. Instead of having to plot the graph, now if I want to find the gradient of this curve when, let's say, x is equal to 1. So I just need to do this when x is equal to 1, the gradient, or dy dx is going to be 3 times 1 to the power of 2. This is going to be equal to 3. It is the exact value of the gradient, okay? This is probably even more, um, more accurate than what we can obtain if we were to manually draw the graph. So can we differentiate it multiple times? Yes, we can. If I were to differentiate this again, then the notation is going to be d square y dx square. If I were to differentiate this again, then the notation, if it is in terms of its function, is going to be f prime prime x. And if I were to differentiate this, it is going to be d dx of 3x to the power of 2. This is like differentiating 3x to the power of 2 with respect to x. And you can continue with this by differentiating it one more time and you'll get a d cube y dx cube like this. And you'll get a f prime 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 x. Okay, and you are just going to continue to differentiate. You know, so you can actually differentiate it multiple times. So how do we differentiate this 3x square? For 3, it is a constant. I'm going to use this rule. So if it is a constant multiplied by a function, then it's going to be the constant multiplied by the differentiation of that function, which means that this can be viewed as 3 times of differentiation of this function x square. So it is going to be 3 times of 2x to the power of 2 minus 1. So it's going to be equal to 2 to the power of 1. My answer here is 6x. And again, do you remember how do we get this? We got this by making use of the table that is in the results. The table of results that we have on the second page, which is this. If you were to look at some of these results, 
especially something that is like this. Actually, this makes total sense, right? Because we have a y is equal to c, where c is a constant. So what, if, what will I be expecting if I were to be drawing the graph? I'll be expecting a horizontal line. And what is the gradient of a horizontal line? Zero. That is why dy dx of y is equal to c is equal to zero. Let us try a few more examples and we're going to see how we can be making use of the results that are here. And we are also going to be trying out some of the rules that we have on the first page. So let's take a look at some of the questions that I've prepared for you. Okay, let's say we have this. We have y is equal to 5x to the power of 3 minus 7 over 6x to the power of 12 minus 8. So we are seeing this expression plus or minus another expression plus or minus another expression. So I can make use of this rule here. So if it is one expression plus or minus another expression, then we can differentiate one, then plus or minus differentiating the other, which means that this if I were to try to find dy dx of this, then it is going to be differentiating this expression, 5x to the power of 3, then minus um, differentiating the other expression, which is 7 over 6x to the power of 12, then minus away differentiating this, which is 8, or we can also do a plus differentiating minus 8. So, what do we get when we differentiate this? It is 5 multiplied by an expression. So we are going to be making use of this. So it's going to be 5 multiplied by differentiation of x to the power of 3. And how do we differentiate x to the power of 3? We have just done that and I'm going to make use of this particular result. So it's going to be 5 differentiating x to the power of 3. It is going to be 3x to the power of 3 minus 1. So it's 2. Then minus this, this is going to be 7 over 6 differentiating x to the power of 12 is 12x 12 to the power of 12 minus 1 to the power of 11. And what is this going to be? This differentiating a constant, this is equal to 0. So my final answer here is going to be equal to 5 times 3 is 15x to the power of 2 minus 7 over 6 times 12, it is going to be 7 times 2. So minus 14x to the power of 11. How about if we were to be given this? y is equal to 5 over square root of x. So we need to first try to take a look at this and you know trying to remember the list of results that we have here. Please make sure that you memorize this. And we just want to ask ourselves which of the result is the most applicable to this, which I cannot see at this moment. But what if I were to try to manipulate and change this using a bit of what we have learned in exponentials to 5x to the power of minus half. Because x to the power of minus half is the same as 1 over square root of x. So now, this over here follows x to the power of n. Because n, which is a rational number, synchronized to this, minus half is also a rational number, a rational constant. Which means that from here, dy dx is going to be equal to 5, then minus half, x to the power of minus half minus 1. Minus half minus 1 gives me a minus 3 over 2. So my final answer here is going to be equal to minus 5 over 2, x to the power of minus 3 over 2. Let me give you another variation. Let's say we have something that is like this, okay? Let's say we have a uh, y is equal to x minus 1, 3 minus 4x to the power of 5. How do you think you will differentiate this? Okay, if you think about it, Okay, I don't really have a result that is similar enough to this, but we can definitely manipulate this, this uh, expression a little bit by doing an expansion. If I were to expand, this times this gives me 3x. This times this, minus 4x to the power of 6. This times this, minus 3. This times this, plus 4x to the power of 5. And now if I were to differentiate this, then we will be getting a 3 x, this is x to the power of 1, okay? x is x to the power of 1. So x to the power of 1 is going to be 1, x to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0, then minus 4, then this will be 6, x to the power of 5, this is going to be 0, and as for this, this will be 5, x to the power of 4. 
this is like really weird, okay? So, so we usually don't write there as one, then x to the power of zero, okay? Because one is due there, so usually we'll just ignore this one, and x to the power of zero is one. So differentiating three x gives me just a three. Then this is minus 24 x to the power of five, and this is zero. So here I have my last expression, 20 x to the power of four. Let me give you one more example. What if we have this? y is equal to 7x to the power of 2 plus 11x minus 10 divided by 2x to the power of 2. Think about it. How do you think you will change this expression that is on the right-hand side here so that we can make use of one of the results here and definitely we are going to be making use of some of the rules that we have discussed so far. Can you think of what you can do to manipulate this so that we can make use of what we have discussed so far? We can try to re-express this as this term here divided by this, which will give us a 7 over 2. Then plus this term here divided by this, which will give us a 11 over 2x. Then minus this divided by this, which will give us a 5 over x to the power of 2. And it is still not exactly in accordance to what we can use in terms of the results that is here to differentiate. So I need to do one more thing which is this, 7 over 2, I'm going to just leave it, it is a constant, I can differentiate this. As for this, I'm going to rewrite it as 11 over 2, x, I'm going to write it as x to the power of minus 1. Then minus 5, similarly for this, I'm going to write it as x to the power of minus 2. And now I can make use of these results. And this dy dx is equal to, this will become 0. As for this, it is going to be 11 over 2, then differentiating this is minus 1, then x to the power of minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. And it will be minus 5 of this, this is minus 2, x to the power of minus 2 minus 1, it's going to be to the power of minus 3. So we will be getting a minus 11 over 2x squared, then plus 10 over x to the power of 3. Let me give you more examples. So now what if we have something that is like this, y is equal to 3x squared multiplied by sine x. We will definitely not be able to manipulate this such that we can try to make use of uh, any of these results here directly. But if you were to look at the rules that we have on the first page of the outline, there is this product rule and quotient rule. Product rule helps us to differentiate an expression where it is the product of two expressions that we can differentiate them separately. So if I were to apply product rule, let's take a look at how we can do that. If I were to apply product rule where, where it is a case that is like this, where for one function fx multiplied by another function gx, then according to the product rule, this is what we are supposed to do. It is dy dx is going to be First, I'll write down one of the functions, fx. Let's say in this case, fx is this. So I'm going to write down this. Then I will differentiate the second function, differentiating g, which is the second function. So I'll be differentiating sine x. Then plus, I'll write down the second function as it is, which is sine x. Then I will differentiate the first function, in this case here, fx. In this case here, it is 3x square. So this is going to be equal to 3x square multiplied by sine x. How about sine x? Do we have a sine x here? Yes, we have sine x. When I differentiate it, it's going to give us a cosine x. So differentiating this gives us a cosine x, then plus sine x. Differentiating this, we have been doing it for a while. So this is equal to 3 times 2x to the power of 1, right? Differentiating this is 3 then 2x to the power of 1, which I'm going to write it as just 6x. Let me give you another example. What if we have this? Let's say y is given to me as x squared minus 4 divided by tangent x. So for this, I know individually they can be differentiated. If I were to treat this as one function, this as another function. But now we have one function divided by another function, so instead of using the product rule, we are going to be making use of the quotient rule. So quotient rule tells us that if we are going to be differentiating this expression, 
then dy dx is going to be equal to, okay, we have a numerator and a denominator here. I'm going to write down the denominator first. It is just a habit that I have, okay? So according to what we have here, it is just going to be the denominator square. So it is going to be tangent x square, which is going to be tangent square x or tangent x, the whole thing square. Then as for the numerator, we are going to write down the denominator first as it is, which is going to be tangent x. Then we are going to differentiate the numerator, so d dx of the numerator. Then minus away, according to what we see here, minus away writing down the numerator, then multiply by the differentiation of the denominator. So writing down the numerator, it is going to be x squared minus 4. Then we will be differentiating the denominator, which is tangent x. So this is going to be equal to tangent x. Then multiply by differentiating this, it is going to be differentiating x squared is 2x to the power of 1. Minus differentiating a constant, it is 0. So I'm going to be left with just 2x. Then minus away this, I'm going to write it down as it is. Differentiating tangent x, according to the results that we have here, we do have a tangent x. Tangent x, when I differentiate it, it's going to get me a secant square x. So this, I'm going to write it as secant square x x and this is going to be divided by tangent square x okay product rule and quotient rule they're actually very very simple to apply you can also take a look at my example here okay i'm applying the quotient rule here and here i'm applying the product rule let me show you another example which we are going to try to apply this chain rule Let me show you how we can be applying chain rule. And uh, okay, let's just take a look at an example, okay? So what if we have something that is like this? Y is equal to, let's say, 4x squared plus 5 to the power of 3. How do you think we can differentiate this? Of course, we can apply a binomial expansion to expand this. And I believe that with the examples that we have done previously, you can see how we can be making use of this to continue with the differentiation process, right? But uh, what if this is going to be to the power of 30.3? Okay, then the binomial expansion is going to be getting us 31 terms. The binomial expansion itself may kill us before we can even differentiate. So for a case that is like this, we are going to try to apply chain rule. And if I were to be applying chain rule, what we will do is we will look at this and we will try to find a similar expression, uh, an expression that can be differentiated within another expression that can be differentiated. For example, for example, I'm going to let u be equal to 4x squared plus 5 because I know 4x squared plus 5 can be differentiated. And if I were to let u be equal to 4x squared plus 5, that means y will look like u to the power of 3, which can also be differentiated with respect to u because from here, what is dy du? dy du is 3u to the power of 2. From here, what is du dx? Differentiating u with respect to x. Differentiating this is going to be 4 multiplied by 2x to the power of 1. Then differentiating 5 with respect to x is going to be equal to 0. So we have here as 8x, which means that dy dx, which is what we are supposed to find, According to this, dy dx is dy du multiplied by du dx. So dy dx is going to be dy du multiplied by du dx, which is going to be 3u squared multiplied by 8x. And what is u? u, according to what we have came up with just now, is actually this 4x squared plus 5 to the power of um, 2. Then after that, multiply by 8x. So this times this, it is going to be equal to 24x. Then 4x squared plus 5 to the power of 2. This is when we are trying to apply the chain rule. And that is when we have a function that can be differentiated that resides within another function that can be differentiated also. Let me give you another example. How about making use of this particular example here? So we have a, we have a y is equal to x squared plus ln x to the power of 8. 
Okay, we are going to be differentiating this. And we, I don't think we will be able to differentiate this directly. Even with expansion, like what we were saying, it's going to be very, very tedious. So if I'm able to observe and realize that if we were to let u be equal to x squared plus ln x, and we can differentiate this. Okay, why can we differentiate this with respect to x? Because du dx is going to be equal to differentiating x squared is 2x to the power of 1. And differentiating ln x, we just need to refer back to the results that is here. Differentiating ln x is 1 over x. So if u is equal to this, that means y is going to be just u to the power of 8. And this can be differentiated with respect to u because from here, dy du is going to be equal to 8 u to the power of 7 which means that dy dx is going to be dy du times du dx is going to be 8 u to the power of 7 multiplied by 2x 1 over x which is going to be equal to 8 u u is this so 2x plus 1 over x then to the power of 7 multiplied by 2x plus 1 over x and in fact, I'm hoping that you will be able to do this by applying a bit more of a mental sum. Instead of going through this, let u be equal to this expression, then after that find du dx, then take dy du, multiply by du dx. Okay, this is, this is okay. It's just that this is, this is sort of like inefficient, not fast enough. Okay, and usually when you practice more for your differentiation, which you guys should definitely practice as much as possible for differentiation, okay? So after you have differentiated a few more times, you realize that you can actually skip this. For example, if I were to be doing this again, and if I can observe and see that, hey, this is like u, okay? And it is as if it is uh, x to the power of three. So, dy dx is going to be, if I were to treat this as if it is a x to the power of 3, it is going to be 3, then x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 2. And this that is here was the u, which is going to be 4x squared plus 5. Then I will multiply by the differentiation of u, which is equal to, differentiating this, we have a 4 times 2x plus 0. So it is going to be an 8x which actually synchronize directly to what we have here. So if you can do this, I think that is going to be perfect because we will be able to execute the chain rule fast. And let's try it for here. So if I were to see this thing here as u, which means that dy dx is going to be equal to 8, then this to the power of 7. And what is this? This is x squared plus ln x, and I will differentiate this, which gives us a 2x plus 1 over x, which is actually exactly the same as this. Let me give you a few more examples, and I want to try this version together with you, okay? Because I seriously think that it is going to be more useful for us to be doing this in exam than to go through this whole process over here. Although this is theoretically still good, so please still learn this, but during the execution, I hope that you can try out the red colored version. Okay, let's try a few more examples. Let's start with something that is more similar to what we have done so far. So, what if we have a y is equal to 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 6, and this is to the power of 5. So, we're going to be applying chain rule, and if I were to apply chain rule, then dy dx is going to be, I'm going to be treating this as if it is u. So it is going to be u to the power of 5, differentiating it with respect to u, it is going to be 5, then this to the power of 4. And this u is 2x to the power of 4 plus 3x to the power of 6. I'm going to differentiate this, which will give me, differentiating 2x to the power of 4 gives me a 2 times 4x to the power of 3 plus 3 times of differentiating x to the power of 6 is 6x to the power of 5. So I have this which is going to be equal to 5, 2x to the power of 4, plus 3x to the power of 6 to the power of 4, of 8x to the power of 3, plus 18x to the power of 5. What if we have something that is like this? y is equal to e to the power of cosine x. Which one do you think you will let it be u? I'm going to let u be cosine x, because I know we have this over here, e to the power of x. Okay, this one is a little bit strange because differentiating e to the power of x will be e to the power of x. So I'm going to let this be the u, 
which means that dy dx is going to be dy du. Differentiating e to the power u is still going to be e to the power of u, which in this case is cosine x. Then I'll differentiate u with respect to x. Differentiating cosine x is here. We have a result here. So differentiating cosine x is minus sine x. And what if we have something that is like this? Let me give it to you here. y is equal to, let's say we have a ln x, then after that it is going to be a cube root of, okay, this is going to be a little bit more tedious, cube root of 4x squared minus e to the power of x. So when I see this, I know I'm going to be making use of the product rule. So let's trigger the product rule. To apply the product rule, I'm going to be following this. So from here, dy dx is going to be, I will keep this constant, I'll keep this as it is, and I'm going to differentiate this expression here. And to differentiate this expression, I'm going to see this as a 4x squared minus e to the power x to the power of 1 over 3. This is going to be easier to differentiate, but we will be, we will be making use of chain rule. Then plus, I'm going to keep this as it is. So cube root of 4x squared minus e to the power x, we are still going to be, we are still applying the product rule then multiply by the differentiation of ln x. So I'm going to be multiplying this with the differentiation of ln x. So this is going to be equal to ln x. And how are we going to be differentiating this? We will apply the chain rule. So I'm going to be treating this as if it is u. So it is going to be u to the power of 3, which is going to be 1 over 3 u, which is this, to the power of 1 over 3 minus 1 minus 2 over 3. And u is this 4x squared minus e to the power of x. And then I'm going to multiply by the differentiation of u. So differentiating 4x squared is going to be 4 times 2x, which is going to be 8x. Then minus differentiating e to the power of x. In case you have forgotten, I don't think it is that easy to forget this, but differentiating e to the power of x, we can refer to the table here, is going to be e to the power of x still. So we have done this. Then plus this here, it is going to be the cube root of 4x squared minus e to the power of x and differentiating ln x, like what we have here, differentiating ln x is 1 over x. So this is 1 over x. Let me give you another example. So here is another example. What if we have a y is equal to e to the power of 2x divided by 1 minus x squared to the power of 3. So for this, we are going to apply the quotient rule first because it is one expression divided by another expression. So if I were to apply the quotient rule, and again, my own personal preference, I'm going to just write down the denominator first, which is going to be the denominator square. So it is going to be 1 minus x squared to the power of 3 square applying indices or exponentials, it is going to be 3 times 2, so to the power of 6. And according to what we have here, the quotient rule, we're going to write down the denominator as it is. So it is going to be 1 minus x squared to the power of 3, and we're going to differentiate the numerator, which is this e to the power of 2x. Then minus, writing down the numerator as it is, then we are going to differentiate the denominator, which is d dx of 1 minus x squared to the power of 3. So it is going to be 1 minus x squared to the power of 3, differentiating this. Okay, again, for this, we need to make use of the chain rule because the formula or the results that we have is only for e to the power of x, but not e to the power of 2x. So I'm going to let 2x be u, and differentiating e to the power of u is still e to the power of u, which in this case is 2x. Then I'll multiply when I differentiate u, which is differentiating 2x, differentiating 2x is going to give me 2x to the power of 0. And x to the power of 0 is 1, so it's going to be just 2. Then minus away e to the power of 2x, then differentiating this, again, I'm going to be making use of chain rule. I'm going to be treating this 1 minus x squared as u. So it is u to the power of 3, differentiating it is 3u to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 2. Then I'll multiply by the differentiation of u, which is differentiating 1 is 0. Differentiating minus x squared is minus x to the power of, sorry, minus 2x to the power of 1, which is minus 2x. 
So we have this, and we're going to be dividing this by 1 minus x squared to the power of 6. Okay, I'm going to leave you to simplify this. We are going to be focusing a bit more on the differentiation part. So let me move on to another example, an interesting one. In fact, it is this y is equal to ln 5 minus 3x squared divided by 1 plus 4x. We can definitely try to treat this as a, a, a chain rule first. Okay, you know why? Because this looks like this ln x. So, but x is now going to be replaced by this expression, which I'm going to call it u, which means that if I were to differentiate this as if this is u, then it is going to be 1 over, according to the formula here, okay, it is 1 over x. So, if I were to treat this as u, it will be differentiating this with respect to u, it will be 1 over u, and it will be 1 over 5 minus 3x squared divided by 1 plus 4x. Then I will still need to differentiate u, which is this. This 5 minus 3x squared divided by 1 plus 4x, which means that I will need to apply another round of quotient rule. Can this be done? Yes, it can be done, but it is sort of tedious. So I have a tip for you, and the tip is, whenever you are trying to apply differentiation, to something that you can also be applying the laws of logarithmic functions, then I believe you should consider the law of logarithms first. For example, like for a scenario that is like this, although this is possible, but what we can also do is to try to apply the laws of logarithms to rewrite this as ln of 5 minus 3x squared minus ln of 1 plus 4x. Then, if I were to differentiate this, it is going to be equal to, I'm going to be applying chain rule. So I'm going to be treating this as u. So I'll differentiate this with respect to u, which is going to be 1 over u, which is 1 over 5 minus 3x squared. Then multiply by the differentiation of u. Differentiating 5 is 0. Differentiating this minus 3x squared is minus 6x to the power of 1. Because it is going to be minus 3 multiplied by 2x to the power of 1, which gives us a minus 6x. Then minus away differentiating this, this I'm going to be treating it as u. So differentiating ln u is 1 over u, which is 1 over 4 plus x. Then multiply by differentiation of this, differentiating 1 it is equal to 0. And differentiating 4x is going to be 4x to the power of 0, which is going to be 4. So here is 4. These are the examples that we have gone through here, but you definitely should try to do as much practice for your differentiation technique as possible. And once you are well-versed enough with it, I'll see you in the next part of differentiation.